What's up guys, it's Magic Alex. Welcome back to the series on the Hackintosh project. And in this video, we'll be talking about the parts that I've chosen for my build. We'll go over the reasons why I chose those parts. And for each part, I'll give you an alter uh, several alternatives, in fact, f to those parts that you could look into um, and perhaps, you know, pick and choose for your own system. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I like to talk about is the casing. Now this build is a little bit unique in that I'm trying to build a system around the Bitfinex Prodigy, which is a gorgeous case. And when I saw this case, I told myself that I have to put a Mac in this case. So I'm starting my build with the Prodigy as a base. And the reason for this is because the Prodigy is an ITX um, case. It's a mini ITX case, which is the smallest form factor out there for motherboards. So this will limit our options for motherboards um, and expandability by quite a bit but I really did want to put a system into this case so I've chosen to start with the case now the reasons that I decided to go with the case was because of its small form factor so it will fit nicely on a desk without getting in the way of too many things for the price it really can't be beat in the mini ITX department because it's got great expandability you can fit a full-size graphics card in this mini ITX case which is unheard of for a mini ITX case. Moreover, there are plenty of modifications you can build, such as removing the drive base. Um, there's plenty of space for water cooling. If I do decide to go into that in the future, I will be sticking to air cooling for the moment, and I'll tell the reasons why. But if in future I do decide to go water cooling, you know, there's space enough for a 240 mil rad on top, and plenty of space for a single bay reservoir without modifications and I, if I do want to put a double bay reservoir in there then I can modify it to in fact fit the double bay reservoir. Apart from that, the build quality is just amazing on this case and you can see, read a lot of reviews out there that just tell you how sturdy this case is with the um, thickness of the side panels etc. The Prodigy does come in several colors, it comes in orange, red, black, and white so there are plenty of options for you to choose from and as of January 2013 they've announced that they will have uh, versions with transparent side panels so that's going to be great. So let's move on to the motherboard. As I mentioned the Prodigy does limit my options to only mini ITX boards. Even in that department the motherboards have come so far now that even the mini ITX motherboards are truly powerful. Uh, for what for the form factor that they provide you with. So there were several options in this department, but I decided to go with the ASRock Z77 EITF. So the reason I decided to go with this board was because it delivered the best bang for my buck, as well as having great support on the Hackintosh community. It's got great overclock, overclocking capabilities, and it just gives overall a really good performance for the price. The There are several drawbacks. Um, for this board, namely that you cannot control the CPU PLL on here, but that doesn't really matter until you get up to really high overclocking speeds. Speed stepping works right out of the box. Power management features like sleep also work right out of the box. So it's a great board for the Hagintosh. The other options out there were the Zotec Z77, the Asus P8 Z77i Deluxe, which is a great board. It's got a lot of overclocking capabilities, but it costs a lot more than this board with not much um, improvement in performance. So I decided to forego that to try and keep the board within my budget. And there was recently released also the EVGA Stinger, which looks amazing. However, it's not been tried and tested, so I decided to forego that as well. But if you're looking for a beautiful looking motherboard and don't mind experimenting a little bit, um, you you could look into getting the Z77 Stinger. Next up is something that a lot of people tend to look over. The power supply is something that people tend to leave till the very end and whatever money they have left over, they'll just tend to get the cheapest power supply they, they can get their hands on. I've chosen the Seasonic G-Series 550 power supply. This power supply is a gold rated power supply, which means it's gonna give me great efficiency. For the boot drive, I've chosen to boot off of the Crucial M4 128 gigabyte SSD. If you're going for an SSD, I do encourage you to go for SSDs that are 128 gigs or above because 64 gig SSDs uh, just aren't 
there in terms of performance. As the SSD fills up, the performance tends to drop off by quite a bit. So I'm looking to fill half of my SSD with the applications and operating system and leave the, the other half empty. As for alternatives to solid state drives, I did look at the Samsung 830, which is a great performer. I could not get my hands on one. In fact, th that was my first choice. So um, I had to go with the Crucial instead. Uh, if you have the budget, you might want to think about looking at the Intel 520s, which I was a little hesitant in getting because of the Sandforce controller. But apparently the issues are ironed out now, so you'll be pretty safe going for the 520s. Do not go for the Samsung 840s, I would say, because that uses a lower quality NAND. Just go for the M4 if, if you're thinking of going for the 840. However, the 840 Pro is a different story. It is much more expensive. Again, if you have the budget, um, the 840 Pro is quite possibly the best SSD out there that you can get today. In later videos, I'll show you how to upgrade the firmware on the SSD to ensure the best performance possible. For storage, I've gone with two one terabyte Seagate one terabyte per platter drives. Now these drives are the latest technology in the hard drive arena. They have one terabyte of data on each platter. Now what that means is that the bits are now closer together and because it's a mechanical hard drive, the head has to move less between the bits to read and write the data, which means you get a greater performance. The other option that I had was to get the Western Digital Black, which comes with a five-year warranty as opposed to the Seagate three-year warranty, but the Western Digital Black only has 500 gigabytes per platter. I really did want to go for that better performance on the one terabyte um, per platter. And as you, as you will see in benchmarks later on, they really do perform blazingly fast. I will be rating the one terabyte drives in parallel, meaning in RAID 0 configuration. What that means is that I will be able to almost double the read and write speeds on the drives. And once again, watch out for the benchmarks later on. You will truly be blown away by these one terabyte per platter hard drives. Next up, we'll be taking a look at the graphics card. I've decided to go with the EVGA GeForce 650. Um, I'm not a real hardcore gamer, so I I didn't need to go with uh, such a high-end card, so I went with 650 instead. This one does come with the DDR5 memory. The earlier versions of the 650 only had the DDR3 memory, so when this came out, um, I grabbed it. If you'd want to go for a little better performance on video processing, uh, you can upgrade to a 670 or even a 680, uh, which will give you more CUDA cores. AMD does make better price to performance ratio video cards. However, the Nvidia is better supported for the Hackintosh. Now, since I will be overclocking the CPU, I wanted something that will keep it cool. I had the option of doing a closed loop water cool, but I decided against that because of the cost. If I do want a water cool in future, I've decided that what I'm gonna do is do a custom loop as opposed to a um, ready-made loop like the Corsair H series, but the price does not really justify the performance that you get out of them. For a little bit more, you can get a really nice custom water cooling system from Access PC, for example. So I will leave that for the future when I have the budget to upgrade to a custom water cooling. In the meantime, I have this. Well, it's not here because it's in my system, but this is the Dark Knight let me see if I got this right. It's the Dark Knight Nighthawk Edition um, by Zygmatech. Now, Zygmatech did release a Dark Knight before this, a couple of years before, but this one is the Ceramic Edition. It just looks gorgeous, uh, as you'll see in future videos. You can see in the system, it just looks gorgeous because it's got a new um, ceramic technology that's supposed to dissipate heat at much higher rates than just normal aluminum fins because it's got a larger surface area and it's got pretty good reviews, um, which I'll link to below. For the RAMs, I got these Sniper 16 gig pack. It's two 8 gig RAMs, uh, CL9, 1600 megahertz um, RAMs. You might be thinking that 16 gigabytes is a little bit of an overkill, but I will be allocating a substantial amount of it 
perhaps up to eight gigabytes for RAM disk so that I can have a really quick scratch disk when I'm doing my Photoshop. I will be going into details on how you can set up a RAM disk so that you can actually write scratch data to the RAM as opposed to, to the hard drive, which will give you an enormous boost in performance. One final part that I needed to put into this system is the replacement for the onboard Wi-Fi card. The onboard Wi-Fi card is actually not compatible with the Hackintosh, so I purchased um, another Wi-Fi card, a Dell Arthros Wi-Fi card off of eBay for 10 bucks. And I'll sh put the link in the description below so that you can purchase that Wi-Fi card as well if you do in fact want Wi-Fi on the board. So that was a take a look at the parts that will be going into my Hackintosh build. I put the links to all the parts in the description below. Feel free to explore and look for other options as well that might suit your needs better. In the next video, I will be putting these parts together into my Hackintosh build. So make sure you stay tuned and look at that video if you want to know how to put the parts together. And don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe for more updates because there will be more updates coming in this series of the Hackintosh build.